Los Cabos is one of the most popular destinations in Mexico, but just two hours away, you'll find a hidden gem, La Paz. It's easy to access by car or bus from Los Cabos, and you'll find incredible beaches, they're better than Cabos beaches in my opinion, delicious food, and unique wildlife experiences. Join us as we share the top five things to do in La Paz, Mexico. Starting off strongly with my favorite thing we did, you have to do a tour to the Isla Espiritu Santo. Prices start at 850 pesos, making it pretty affordable for a six hour tour. You'll get on a boat in La Paz and head to the UNESCO World Heritage Site about an hour away. Once at the islands, you'll stop at different coves and learn about the history of the island before reaching the rock that is home to a large colony of sea lions. You'll get the chance to snorkel with the sea lions and watch them glide around you in the clear water. It's also a great place for snorkeling as you'll see a lot of colorful fish and sea stars. After snorkeling, you'll have lunch on the beach in Senada Grande and relax on the beautiful shore before heading back to La Paz. Voted one of the prettiest beaches in Mexico, and while still being relatively unknown to the average international tourist, Playa Balandra is a must-see when in La Paz. This gorgeous beach includes various bays with the water only reaching about waist deep, meaning you can wade between them or even rent a kayak to explore for about 400 pesos. The color of the water almost makes you think you're in the Caribbean until the cactus-lined hills draw you back to Baja, but you won't see beaches like this in Los Cabos. This beach has gotten very popular, so they only allow 450 people at a time. There are two time slots groups are allowed in, 8 a.m. to noon and 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. During the busy summer months, you'll want to arrive early to ensure you get a spot. Entrance is free, or at least it was when we visited in October 2023. I've seen something online about it costing 50 pesos or 160 pesos for international visitors, but I wasn't charged. There are 22 shade umbrellas, so either arrive extra early to be one of the first 22 groups or bring your own. I've included a link to the beach tent that we use that fits in a carry-on. Pro tip, if you're part of the group at 8 a.m., wait a bit to hike up the hill for the panoramic views of the bay since the water will look more blue and better in your photos once the sun has risen a bit more. If you're finding this information helpful or interesting, don't forget to subscribe for helpful guides to help you travel more. If you don't make it into Balandra in the first group, or if you want another beach to visit after your time is up, look no farther than Playa Tecolote. Just a three minute drive from Balandra, this beach has views of the Isla Espiritu Santo and the water is just as clear and blue as Balandra. Playa Tecolote has more services with a few restaurants and tour operators. If you're unable to get into Balandra, they will take you on a boat for 800 pesos, which is kind of a lot considering it's right around the corner. You can also hike, but it's about five miles round trip with no shade, so be prepared. We didn't hike, but I bet the views are amazing. You can rent a table or lounge chairs at Tecolote for around 500 pesos, and then those 500 pesos count towards your bill for food and drinks. You can snorkel at either end of the beach as well. The Mogote Dunes are a unique experience and perfect spot for sunset. You can take a tour to go sandboarding here for an extra unique experience, but we chose to just sit and enjoy the sunset. It's a 40 minute drive with most of it except the last mile or two on a paved road. 
There's no public transportation though, so you'd need to either have a car or take a tour. It was such a cool and unique spot for sunset, I'd highly recommend a trip out there. And lastly, you can't visit La Paz without a visit to the Malecón. This boardwalk stretches three miles along the city's waterfront. The pier and raised gazebo are a must-see, and you can see sculptures by local artists as you stroll the promenade. While there's some museums and other sites to see like the cathedral in La Paz, the main tourist site within the actual city of La Paz is for sure the Malecón. I recommend visiting at sunset for the best lighting and it won't be as hot out. There's a lot of places to stop and eat or shop while you walk. We opted for an ice cream cone to escape the heat one afternoon. La Paz is an underrated destination in Mexico that I'd recommend to anyone who loves the beach and snorkeling. You can visit these top spots in about two to three days, but you could visit lots of other beaches or take it a little slower as well. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time as we continue exploring Baja California Sur, Mexico.